Hello everybody, Big Plains here, and today I'm going to update you on what I've done for the 727 project. Now, again, I have not really started buying any specific parts for this plane. This is the stage, or this is the part of the process, where I'm using different plates and different wedges and all sorts of different ideas to test whether some things are going to work and some things aren't. And I'm using different techniques to see which, which ones will fit the bill the best. So again, this is the stage I do before I start buying parts. Because I want to know what's going to work before I start buying parts, which is basically what we're doing right now. So I'm going to start back here at the tail, oddly enough, and sort of see what we have going here. So I remember in the last video, I said I thought these quarter round macaroni bricks would work pretty well. And this is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Obviously, this is be in light gray, not red or tan. But these will be the engine intakes for the the jet engines. And I'm experimenting with different techniques to uh, get powered jet engines. Again, these things are so small, they're low bypass ratio, that I'm not sure if it's even worth it. But I am looking into it. I might gear it by having a single motor in the center, center and then having shafts that go out to each one. The central motor, this one, or the central engine, this is actually an S-duct, so the fan blade wouldn't be right here. It would actually be further in the tail, so we're not going to really worry about this one. But again, I'm exploring different ways for how we can motorize each different nacelle. So again, different ideas. I think this looks pretty good, but again, it's not final. Out towards the wing here, I have decided that these will be the tires that I use. These are Basically the same tires that I use on most of my other builds. They're just your standard tires. They have the balloon going in the center of them. So, you know, they're kind of squishy, you know, eh, nice and fun. They have good traction. They have the axle connection here. So they're, they work usually pretty well. I have them on this plane. I have them on that one and of everything else. So these are the tires I'm going to use. Hopefully they work out pretty well. And when it comes to the wing itself, these are sort of the interesting techniques I've thought up. So it's a sort of interesting wing. It's not exactly the same. It's actually more swept than the 737 wing. But right here, you can clearly see that this is not perfectly straight. So this is slightly angled. So what I'm doing here, so you can kind of see, is I'm using these plates here as a backer. So these will not actually be visible. These will just be there to get this angle. This right here, the white and the black, this represents the flaps. So these will, oops, just sort of knocked it out of the line there. These right here, those will be the flaps, just like uh, these right here on this plane. Those will be right here. In fact, I believe they're the same design. I Don't quote me on that. And for the leading edge, I don't use wedge plates for the leading edge because I think that looks really bad. But I am probably going to use these new wedge tiles here that are available in dark gray. I'm just using white to model it here, so don't worry. And then on the leading edge, of course, we'll use curved slopes like this, just like I did on the 737. And out here towards the center, right where the gap would be, because I did struggle with that quite a bit here on the 737. As you can see here, there is a bit of a gap, but I was able to hide that a little bit with the pylon. But since there is no pylon here, I sort of don't know what to do. So I'm going to probably end up using these bricks on their side construction. I did sort of do something similar to this with the 787, but of course that's on a much larger scale, so it's easier to do that. But for a smaller plane, this is sort of what I'm thinking of. Hopefully this works out. I still need room to add a dihedral. So again, I don't know. This is just modeling. And I'm probably going to use these larger wedge plates here to get the correct angle for the rest of the wings. You kind of see that about gives the right angle. Again, this wedge plate will not be visible from the outside. There will probably be a hint here. I, this plane right here is a good example of it. You can see here I just use curved slopes sort of staggered like this and then hinged something like that. I'll use a very similar technique to this right there. Obviously there will be a flap and all sorts of stuff, but that's probably what I'm doing here. No wedge plates will be visible. And of course all this will be tiled off and the leading edge will be curved slopes. And I'm hoping with this to be able to uh, have a very clean, sleek wing just like this one, but without having those gaps in between, because I really don't like those gaps. So that's my goal to eliminate those. For the fuselage, this is fairly simple actually. I'm just copying it straight over from this plane because it's the same. I'm copying the nose right over. Obviously the colors will be different, but it'll basically be the same. The tail, 
I'm probably going to do that in just standard bricks construction. Again, a lot of things I can't plan, but I want to know as far ahead in advance the kind of parts I'm going to need so I could understand what parts I need to order from BrickLink. So that's just sort of what I've been thinking of lately on what this plan is. Hopefully we can start building it soon. I am about done with the 787, though hopefully we can have a video on that out soon so we can finish that project and go full steam into this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, I hope you made it through it. I hope it didn't bore you too much. And that's all I have for this video. Bye for now.